Warning, this is an adult-oriented podcast about really perverse things like communication and consent. If you are under 18 and looking for answers to questions about sex or kink, please visit scarletteen.com. For the dude bro listeners, this is the nerdy shit. Fuck off! <laughs> I don't know how we're going to record if we're AWOL. Willing against a wall. Mm. I love when you talk dirty to me. <laughs> That changes everything. <laughs> Welcome back, Gothamites, to the Gotham Press Podcast. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let me see how he's feeling. This is your, <laughs> this is one of your hosts, Anemic Princess. Today, I'm joined by my fellow host, Greedy. Yeah. <laughs> and Thief of Dreams. No. <laughs> how do y'all sound like the exact same person? <laughs> that was... I mean, well, look great. at us, because, you know, <laughs> we, we're so similar, right? We are. We can masturbate looking at each other, and it's... It's like we're in a mirror. Yeah, it's like you're just in the bathroom. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Well, all that right. Happened. Why did you have to make this awkward? <laughs> Fuck you. We're also joined by our, our guest, the ever-lovely Trash Kitten. Hello. Hello. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm pretty great. Thank you for being our surprise guest, our last minute guest today. (laughs) (laughs) From Bakersfield to Mount Olympus, Gotham Press talks naughty business, sexual topics to explore your whoredom, good if you're new or kinky Yoda, Gotham Press Podcast. The dirty kinksters your parents warned you about. We are going to talk about some pretty fun stuff today, but before we do that, I would like to thank all of our Patreon supporters. For just $1 a month, you can help our podcast thrive, and for $5 a month, you can get early access to all of the episodes. Lately, I've been hearing a lot of podcasts are being put behind a paywall, and the, one of the ways that we manage to keep from that happening is our patron, patron support. So if you would, please do, do help keep this podcast a free resource this is as long as we can we're going to keep from ever being behind a paywall for y'all absolutely agreed but if we ever have to go behind that paywall we'll make it worth it oh we'll make it real special mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> suddenly the podcast will be sponsored by my only fans it's gonna it's gonna go crazy cookies if you the paywall <laughs> If you would like to know where to find us, just go ahead and take a look in the show notes. We'll show you everything that there is to see. And if you would like to speak to us directly, you can reach out to us by contacting Candy's Sweet Sweet Box. Area code 805-303-1173. Thank you so much. One day I will learn that number, but that day is not today. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, We'd like to give a special thanks to all of our sponsors. Uh, J&W Paddles, they do phenomenal woodwork. Check them out at jwpaddles.com. Uh, we have Piercings by B LLC. Uh, where can you find Piercings by B? Well, she is now located at Good Fortune Tattoo uh, here in Bakersfield, 231 Roberts Lane in Bakersfield, having the grand opening. Now, by the time you hear this episode, it will have been last week, so definitely go give her some love. Uh, so you can find her there. You can also find her on Etsy and on her website, piercingsbyb.com, to go ahead and set up an appointment. Sweet. And you definitely want to make an appointment. Do not drop in on an ounce. Yes, do not. She does not take walk-ins. Hey, nope. B, thanks for doing my tits. I appreciate it. It. Thank you for doing my titties too. We all appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. Some of us more than others. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> uh, we'd also like to thank Steel Br- or Brad of Steel for his Steel Brat Passies. There you go. <laughs> if you would like to purchase a custom adult pacifier, then you can go ahead and you can find Steel Brat Passies both on FetLife and on uh, Instagram as well. Mm-hmm. Finally, we'd like to thank uh, Thief's Touch. Because Thief does some pretty phenomenal leather work. Yes, he does. Limited leather work in the form of floggers. <laughs> but uh, if you'd like a flogger, you can always find Thief's Touch on Etsy. And take it from there. And sadly, there's no more local pickup because Etsy has a new five-star system that doesn't allow for anything other than shipping. Wow. Yikes. Yep. Oh. Or they completely take you out of the ranks and listings. Oh, screw them. So, yeah. 
So, so yeah. if you want to do a local pickup, come and talk to Thief personally. Yeah, you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still doable. You would just definitely have to message me, and don't purchase it through Etsy because as soon as you click that buy button on Etsy, it has to be shipped. Uh, where can they message you? On FetLife, Instagram, um, Twitter. Although Twitter's gonna be a little, I don't can't guarantee what kind of message or what kind of reply you're gonna get because it's my Twitter is is a mix between. Twitch broadcasters and cam girls. So Twi- that's like Twitter's like your spicy zone. Like you, when you're feeling sassy is when you post on Twitter. I noticed. Uh, I yeah, I, I don't really <laughs> post on there very much. But it's because you can't post anything on Facebook anymore. Everything gets fucking warning or banned. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm not even posting like bad things, and I, I still get banned. So I'm like, fuck Facebook. I'm kind of I'm still on there, but I, I'm not on there. Really. You're not I active. I just, yeah. I just have my profile still, but yeah. And Instagram's kind of where I try to keep just my like photography and different weird kind of darker versions of me. Mm-hmm. So Twitter's my little horny boy page. Awesome. Like, <laughs> yeah. Best place to get a flogger. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, sponsors. Although I should say that if you're trying to contact me on any of those, it's Thief of Dreams. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good point. Good point. Yeah. Can we make a point to put that in the show notes? Nope please maybe <laughs> okay i'll take it maybe thank you <laughs> be sure to listen in through the entire podcast for our word of the day because there is a pretty kick-ass giveaway coming up soon yes, that is absolutely greedy's definition of soon may be different from the rest of ours hey, hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> <shut up. laughs> it's been a while i know yeah. covid i'm sorry that's true there's been a whole whole pandemic happening yeah. pandemonium panic at the disco Panini. Panini. <laughs> Pan fried rice. Anyway, we have a... <laughs> Why did that kill it? <laughs> I know, I said panini and I must be like, oh, pan fried rice. What else? Paninis? What? We have a fun show for you guys today. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've completely derailed this. <laughs> I uh, I wanted to know a little bit this week about uh, different kink roles. Now, um, when I'm when I speak about roles, typically I'm referring to like when you join, like when you join FetLife, and they kind of ask you to define what you are, right? So you're like, I'm a submissive. I'm an age player. I'm a boot black. I'm this. I'm that or the other. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that. So I just wanted to. No, first, do we all agree on that definition when it comes to roles? Sure. They, okay, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. It's good to define these kind of things. You're giving me a look greedy. What definition? The de- like when I say when I say when I think of kink roles, that's what I think of. Does that what is that what you think of too? Or what like dom sub stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. I mean, it, it feels like that's kind of a broad question. That's fair. I just want to make sure that we're all working with the same definition because um, I do also want to talk about titles, which I feel like are different than roles. Okay, throw it at us. What do you got? So when when I think of titles, and we'll talk about this a little more later, when I think of titles, I think of what you would call that person, right? So I may say, um, uh, for example, I may say uh, Kitten is a bottom as her role, right? Mm -hmm. But as a title... I would say that she's kitten or she's my girl or, you know, something like that. You know, the it's what I'm actually referring to them as almost as a replacement for a name. So like I think of like uh, like when we talk about your partner, Greedy, Mm -hmm. um, like we'll we'll say like, oh, you know, her role is a dom. Mm -hmm. Her title, at least between you two, because I don't know how she feels with other people calling her this, but her title may be mistress. Okay, so I see, I see what you're saying. Um, I, I agree with it, but I wouldn't call it a title. I would call it an honorific. An honorific? I like yeah. that better. Because mm-hmm. you're, you're saying something that is identified as a specific role between the two of you, not necessarily for everybody else, but, but it may apply to others yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, a title in my mind would be like uh, something you would, you would run for. At... Like a title holder. Yes, exactly. Okay. I like your, I like calling them honorifics better. Mm-hmm. So I think I'm going to refer to them as being honorifics for the rest of the episode. Okay. Is everyone else cool with that too? Yep. 
Awesome. Cool beans. Okay. So we got, we got our definitions of what we consider to be a role and what we consider to be an honorific. Mm -hmm. Um, so some of the things I kind of want to know about from my fellow hosts and our lovely guest is what role or roles do you currently identify with? Well, personally, I, I am a switch. I've, Mm -hmm. I've been a switch pretty much my entire life. Uh, may have not known it in my younger years, but I do now. Um, there are times that I feel rather toppy and there is times that I feel r- very subby. It mm. really just depends on the situation and who I'm with. Okay. Very cool. What about you, Thief? I... <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Dad noises acquired. <laughs> I don't know what... I got choked up a little bit just thinking about it. It just means so much to me. Mm. I'm a <clears throat> sensual, non-sexual masochist. A sensual, non-sexual masochist. masochist. Yep. Meaning I love anything that has to do with sensations. Mm -hmm. Um, And that can be like different senses as well than just touch. So like smell, see, see. See is a sense. (laughs) Yeah, sight. (laughs) Um, Hearing as well. Uh, That would like probably be my reason for loving so much ASMR. But uh Non-sexual masochist meaning I like pain, but I want it outside of the bedroom. Mm. If we're fooling around and you grab my nuts and squeeze and then, you know, make some weird noise at me like Game you're, over. you're my dom. Yeah, we're done. Like, that's mm-hmm. just not the pain I'm looking for. <laughs> Sorry. I want the kind of pain that allows me to, like, escape from reality back into my own mind and search the little hallways and depths and valleys and peaks and everything in there that can either be inspirational or just downright terrifying. So would you say that for you, pain is more of a cathartic experience and not something you get sexual pleasure from? Absolutely. Okay. Yep. All right. That's some clarification I wanted. Very cool. What about you, Kitten? Um, I am, I mostly identify with like sub and bottom kind of as a little, I guess that would be a, a role. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's probably about it. That's probably about it. Um, I know that... So, I'm transitioning from that a little bit. Um, I know because you are newer to... I say, to organized kink, like organized religion. (laughs) (laughs) I mean... The underground. (laughs) I know you're newer to, like, organized kink. Uh, Like, before that, did you still kind of identify with those roles? Definitely more as, like, a submissive, like, bottom. Mm-hmm. I was not, I'm never a take charge kind of person. <laughs> Just ask. I've hey, noticed. <laughs> <laughs> that brings up a good point, because when I first joined FET as a heterosexual monogamous male, I couldn't click DOM fast enough right? on the little drop-down mm-hmm. menu. And had no idea what that meant. I knew what I thought it meant. You mm-hmm. know, like, I'm in control always. And then it took a long time before. I think I even unchecked it and left it blank for a very long time. And then probably like a year, year and a half ago, changed it to Switch. Where mm-hmm. it's been ever since. Yeah. What about you, Greedy? Have you, has your person... Because I know you said that, like, you, you've always been a Switch kind of, like, whether you really were aware of it or not. Was there something else that you identified with earlier on and then maybe came to come around and be like oh no maybe this fits me a little bit more yeah um when when i first came into the scene um the uh the woman that i met and wound up getting into a relationship with uh was presenting as entirely dominant Mm -hmm. and you know i i felt the inclination to be submissive to her so i identified myself as a sub um after after some some serious play, we discovered that we both had kind of switchy tendencies. So uh, it it evolved into a don't tell her this, but switch switch relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, she still she still holds the title of Dom. Yeah, but we all know. <laughs> <laughs> But some of us will never admit to it like you just did publicly on hey, the fucking hey, broadcast. Hey, hey, so. hey, 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 She doesn't listen. <laughs> well, but I do want to say, especially in regards to your mistress, because she helped me through kind of a, a rough time I was having before. 
because when I first joined the community, I 100% identified as a submissive. Mm-hmm. Like, like I knew that's like not just a bottom, a submissive. I wanted to be in a dynamic. I thought that for me, I had thought that I want to start as a submissive, work up to being a slave and be absolutely perfect in every way. And also I knew that I was a little. Those were like the two things that I went for, right? So I really, like, I joined very quickly. I realized that being a slave probably was never going to be something that I could do. Um, just because the level of, con- like, authority you have to give up is not really something that I think I can, I'm capable of doing. Without the ability to brat? <laughs> no, well, there are plenty of, of bratty slaves. So are there? Not even, oh, I know. <laughs> I know quite a okay. few. <laughs> I, I, I don't. That's why I was, I, I, I guess in my head I assumed that, like, a slave would be much more obedient than just like a, a brat or, a, you know, a sub that's bratty. But It all depends on their contract with their uh, with their owner or master. Okay. That makes so, sense. So, yeah, it kind of sometimes there's like an amount of bratting that's allowed because, you know, even masters like brats sometimes. But there has to be a certain amount that, you know, that's negotiable or not. Um, it shows how much I go to mast now. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> But so those those were the things I really hardcore identified with. Um, I had a very large tendency, I think maybe because of uh, like my gender and sexuality coming in terms of that, like kind of sticking labels on myself. And so I came in with that knowledge and then I started to feel a little bit switchy and I started seeing (laughs) scenes in the dungeon and I started thinking about being the top. And, you know, I started feeling all of these these things. And, you know, finally, I uh, we had a discussion, a big group, you know, community discussion one night. You know, and I said, I don't know what to do, because I feel like I'm, I'm getting interested in these things, but I've defined myself so heavily by these roles, and it was Greedy's mistress that told me that the problem was is that I put myself in a box, and I need to stop putting myself in a box. And that is why she hates labels. Yes. Like with a passion. Yes. <laughs> so that that's because she said this is what happens when you put yourself in a box. You know, you're going to find it really hard to get out of, especially once you decorated that box and made it all comfy and said, this is me. This is my box. And then you realize maybe you want to upgrade, right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> or maybe you want to downgrade, whatever you want to do. Right. It's, you have the hardest time getting out of that. So that kind of like leads me sort of to, to my next thing about like, why are they why are roles important or why are they not important? I kind of want to know what everyone's view is when it comes to specifically roles, not just like labels as a whole that's gonna be a lot to cover, but when it comes to roles within uh b d s m I think for me, sorry if I'm taking anyone's spot i I feel like it helps me feel like I am a part of the community yeah. to have that role to know what my role is at any given time and to know that in this lifestyle you're never done learning so things can change and will change probably um a whole bunch of times and you just have to be willing to accept that i think Mm -hmm. because i i I, it's like the one community you can join where you're never going to know it all yeah. You're never going to reach that spot where you're like, okay, I know everything I need to know now <laughs> because everything is changing and it constantly shifts and changes around you too. So you might, th- like I might think, oh, I know everything there is to know about flogging and floggers. Nope. Like there's <laughs> things that are being discovered and different things that are coming out all around and you have to like pay attention to them and you can't just like ignore them. I don't know why I got so off track. <laughs> but I think roles help me feel like I am where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. Well, and on that vein, like having an in language makes you feel more a part of the community. So like if you know like, oh, hey, I am a submissive. Somebody else in the community also knows what that means. And it's a shorthand that makes you feel included in the group. Right. Mm. Once you learn that, Mm. like, um, always say like something like when you get into a job and you start learning the shorthands and the words for that job it it makes you feel like this is my thing and you forget that outside of that exists and it can be like that kind of thing Mm -hmm. in this so like you you know the language you don't have to explain anything more unless you want to yeah so it gives you a nice shorthand 
Yeah. No, oh, I, I agree. And I think that one of the one of the benefits to roles definitely is too is that if you're seeking companionship of any kind, you know, wanting to be in a dynamic or have a friendship or get to know people, sometimes explaining your role is a first step connection with somebody, mm -hmm. right? So, um, like when we were having Bottoms Club, being able to go there and back then when I was defining myself as a bottom, say, mm -hmm. oh, I'm this, because back then I was a submissive, mm -hmm. I said, you know, I'm a submissive, the other submissives in the room automatically were like, okay, cool, there's there's a connection there, mm -hmm. right? We're able to talk about our point of view as, as submissives. You know, take it another step, if I had identified as a slave, then mm -hmm. the other slaves in the room, that's a, that's a whole other level of mm -hmm. submission, you know, typically. Mm -hmm. um, so it's typically a whole other level of submission. So then the slaves can identify with you and give you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, information or uh, advice from their own experience from that role as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's helpful for that. I also think it's helpful for if you are looking for like a partner you know, there's kind of those things that seem to match. You typically, if you're submissive, you might have a dominant or might want a dominant, mm -hmm. right? So then that's kind of a call out to be like, oh, by the way, I'm this. So if we were to be compatible with each other, you should probably be this. Yeah. So I think that roles can be helpful and important in that way. Do you have any thoughts, Greedy? I think you guys actually pretty well covered my thoughts already. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know what else I could add aside from that. Well... Then let's look at the the negative about roles. Is there anything negative they can think of about having the like, or why are they why are they not important, or why can how can they not be beneficial? They come with preconceived mm -hmm. yeah. ideas built around them. Yeah. 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 Oh, absolutely. You're right. The the preconceived notions we have of what a dominant is, what a submissive is, um, they they definitely lend to the attitude of the one true way or yes. the two dom. Um, I think, I think that is incredibly toxic. Uh, mm -hmm. if you, if you allow that kind of behavior, uh, unchecked, it, it can give anybody that's new coming into the scene a very, very sour taste, especially if they don't believe that that is the true way. Yeah. So, I would say that's that's the real or the, the biggest danger I can think of with uh, having having one set ideology in your mind. Mm -hmm. um, be be flexible, you know. That's that's mm -hmm. all we really can do because mm -hmm. your perception of what a dom is is different than mine. Yeah, and it can make you get stuck in it too. Like yes, it can. It makes you not want to grow. You're like, this is what it means to be this role. So you're not thinking of, well, but does that still fit me? does like no i need to be that mm -hmm. it's like well but i could still be a submissive but change this little bit of me even if it doesn't fit the like true definition of it and you get stuck yeah i mean like i know for me i was having um a conversation with some uh other friends that are involved in lifestyle right and i was telling them just kind of about like the I, trauma is like a big word but some of like the trouble mm -hmm. I was having um, like emotionally or about around defining my roles, especially because it feels like it's been like such like kind of like in flux lately mm -hmm. where I was like, OK, maybe I'm a switch, but I'm definitely a bottom leaning switch. No, maybe I'm just a true switch. No, I'm really top leaning. I'm a really, really <laughs> top leaning switch. And then, you know, so it just feels like it's kind of going everywhere all of the time, mm -hmm. you know, and it's one of those things where it feels like because I can't pick one damn thing and define myself by it essentially that like I'm not allowing myself to uh, experience spaces with other people who identify the same way as me yeah you know and so I was conveying this and the person who I was talking to um, in particular he this this matters to the context of the conversation um, is that he is a leather master you know he was vested and um, covered in a very traditional leather old school leather way mm -hmm. you know so it's very much a lot of his when it comes to his identity in that way it was very traditional coming up in, in kink right but he made a point to tell me and it was very important to me that it was coming from him that he said you know you don't you don't have to fit in a box like how you know how your mistress says greedy mm -hmm. he's, he's like you know you can 
make this shit work for you. Yeah. He's like, you can mold it however you want to. You, it's whatever title, whatever role or title you choose. If you choose to have one, you know, it's ultimately up to your definition because who gives a shit what anyone else says? Mm -hmm. Right. He's like, you have to allow yourself to subvert tradition. Yeah. Because that's one of the things that I know that he was saying, too, is that one of the coolest things about being in this lifestyle, especially now that he's been around for a while and seeing, you know, younger folks come in. He's like, it's kind of great to watch y'all fuck it all up <laughs> and change things up, yeah. you know, and he's make it work for you. He's like, you know, there, there's cool things about having tradition, but there's just as cool things to yeah. say, fuck all of that. I'm a little bit different than that. And this is how I define this to work for me. Yeah. Well, and I always think of it like how, um, like when it comes to my sexuality, I, as a shorthand, say I'm bisexual because mm-hmm. it's easy. And it's the first thing that I heard of. Mm-hmm. And that seemed to fit. But then the more I thought about it, I was like, I don't know. Like, does it fit? And so, like, in my head, I finally came to the conclusion that I'm just going to call myself queer. Yeah. Because it's like, that's the easiest thing. But, like, if somebody asks me and they've, like, or I just meet somebody and it comes up, I'm like, oh, I'm bi. Yeah. Because so you know that that's what the first thing they're going to be able to identify with. They're not, yeah. It's not going to require more questions. Yeah. But if, like, we want to get into it, I can do that. So mm-hmm. it's, like, it's the same kind of thing with this. Like, it's, a, it's an easy shorthand. You can use it. But sometimes it can feel stifling to stay in that. So yeah. you need to be able to break out of that. Yeah. Break out of your role, your title, your whatever. Yeah. So I want to kind of talk about... Um, what are some commonly like misunderstood roles, right? Like I know that like on the podcast we've talked about like kind of like misconceptions about kink in general, but I, I want to talk about when it comes to certain roles, what are some common like misconceptions about them? That submissives are only doing what a dominant tells them to because they have to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not because they want to. Like Absolutely. that was something that learning for me was kind of like oh wow so there's people that, that they want to submit like that is their desire in their heart is to please this person is to do everything they can you know like and i'm like that's just that's amazing like i thought it was just a role play mm-hmm. and it's not and so that that was that was surprising to me yeah. learn to learn or that it's an always all the time thing and they don't get to have a say. That submissives never get to have a say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, no. I I will have opinions about things. Right. <laughs> and, and it's not just because I'm being a brat. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and I would say that kind of depends on the dynamic. I'm sorry, Greedy, I cut you off. How about that since you're a submissive, you have to do what I say? Mm-mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's a big misconception that if you are a submissive, that you submit to everybody. It's like, no, you have to earn that. Uh huh. But that is a misconception. Damn, Skippy. That's earn like, it and negotiate it. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's like one of my favorite things was uh, one of my friends who, uh, I guess, formally to some extent identified as being a slave. Now so, and she now says, "No, I'm his slave." Mm-hmm. Ooh. She's just like she's like she. He is the only one I'll even be submissive to are you kidding me because <laughs> in every other area and like you know i can say this because i know her, she is a dominant person you know she she takes a room over and you know and he's all about that and she and he is the only one who she will ever you know not only submit to but be a slave to mm-hmm. so like yeah so there's that there's definitely something like that in there it all depends i on hope it's who person. i think who i think you know. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about it later. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, it probably is. Yeah. <laughs> well, and that, the other misconception that this, like, leaping off of that is that submissives are submissive in all aspects of their life. Mm-hmm. Like, I am not a wet noodle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, like, I will stand up for myself. I will have opinions. I don't let people step on me unless I want them to. <laughs> so, like, in my day-to-day job and stuff, like, you can't talk down to me. I won't allow it. Mm-hmm. So. Also, she works with a lot of cranky men. <sighs> so she <laughs> so she is definitely no submissive. <laughs> I let them know when they're being dumb. Cranky men suck. <laughs> yep. 
I mean, I think one of the other ones that I had never thought of, I want to say it was maybe, was it Shock Talk that I heard it from the first time? It may have been. Um, uh, you talked about boot blacks, uh-huh. right? And I think it was my first time being introduced even to that word. It was several years ago. Um, and I think he made a point to be like, you know, boot blacks deserve representation, you know, because they don't get talked about nearly enough, especially as a role. And that boot blacks are not always submissive. That is true. And that, like, completely blew my mind. And I've heard from other boot blacks, you know, regards of how they identify. They talk about, like, oh, no, I have plenty of friends where someone tries to talk down to them and they say, excuse me, you're sitting in my chair and I have the, my hands on your leathers and I can do whatever the fuck I want. You think you're in control here? I have your shoelaces. Your shoes are about to be polished pink. Yeah. <laughs> like, I could fuck your day up real quick. Like, no. Right? So that was something that I had never had thought of was just about boot blacks not inherently being submissive. Yeah. So, and some of them don't, some of them really just identify just as being a boot black. Mm-hmm. Not a top, not a bottom. This, mm-hmm. ooh, they're like, boot black is my identity. I didn't realize that, that was such like a really big role until oh, yeah. I started meeting yeah. boot blacks and realized that that was just a big part of their life. I did not know that that was that big of a thing. It's pretty great. They have a, um, uh, I watched a, they did a documentary of the International Miss Boot Black Contest for, I can't remember what year it was. It was several years ago. And um, it's on Vimeo. It's a really good documentary. And it was essentially the history of that contest and what a big deal it was for femme-identified people to have a role even as a boot black because Mm -hmm. there were a lot of men, you know, because, you know, a lot of our... A lot of things we do in kink today kind of comes from the gay leather community. Right. There were a lot of men, even straight men, who said, I will never let a woman touch my boots. Because that's just not done. It was always, you know, the the gay leather boys who would also identify as boot blacks that would take care of all their leathers. So them even opening up to having a Miss Boot Black contest was crazy. And usually the people that were a part of that contest... Uh, were very masculine. Um, several of the contestants uh, are now non-binary and trans men mm-hmm. because back then they went by whatever the gender marker was on your ID. That's how you competed, um, which is, but you know, another time. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but that was that was kind of a really big deal back then. So the first time that a feminine, uh, femme-identified person competed. It was a big deal, and she got a lot of shit for it because she didn't look like a little leather boy running around. You know, she was wearing flowers in her hair and a corset, and mm. she had a whole different style of doing boots that was more sensual and the add a more feminine aspect to it. And I would, do you? I sh- probably should just go research it myself and not like ask you twenty questions about it. But okay. um, do you know if it got its start in like military aspects at all? Uh, I think part of it did. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not sure. I'm not the best one to ask about that because that's going into gay leather history. And I honestly don't know a lot about that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ray's over here what making. Are, what are we doing with the one finger? Shh. Just go with it. Okay. Just go with it. All right. Okay. That's just, happening. Just, just bend over and go with it. Oh. <laughs> I will say a lot of. Uh, I do know that a lot of gay leather came from biker culture. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, so there was a whole lot of leather in there. Um, so maybe you actually have to look into where some of biker culture came from. Yeah. That's and that could be rooted in military. Very much so. To me, because I know that the biker culture came from the military. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And all the biker culture that I know of is all very homophobic very racist very mm-hmm. it can be yeah fucked up like oh yeah and so i could definitely see it like coming from there with like kind of a, a wink and a nod you mm-hmm. know kind of thing well it's it's funny because like you know this leather master that i know he 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 talked he talked to me about you know how intense so many in leather specifically in leather culture 
how tradition is a really big thing for them right you know like i talked about he was you know vested and covered in a certain way you know and he was telling me about what certain what certain things meant like adornments that he had on his cover and his vest and what they meant right and he was like and you know those things are really important to me and they're really important to my my mentor and his mentor right and he was just like but he's like we talk about all these things he's like do you know where the the cover the mirror cap he's like do you want to know how that became popular and so wow i was just like because i can't remember the person's name this person saw it was either james dean or marlon Fr- or uh marlon brando Mar- marlon brando yeah marlon brando in a movie wearing it and said man that gets my cock hard i'm gonna start <laughs> wearing that <laughs> And then it just kind of took off, right? And he was just like, so <laughs> and he was telling me about that, you know, in our conversation about like how it's okay to say like, you know, fuck putting yourself in a box or mm-hmm. like, you know, doing traditional stuff like that. He's like, because while, well, you know, these things are really important to me, I also recognize how funny it is that that's where it came from, right? And he's like, so you can't take it too seriously. If it's important to you, it's important to you. But you could also say man, fuck that. I'm, you know, he's, he's like, you know, it was really important for me to get my, my cap this way because it meant a lot to me and my tradition. You can go buy one tomorrow and wear and say, because I think it's sexy. And I'd be like, all right. <laughs> well, and my favorite offshoot of that, of gay leather culture is the fact that the only reason that leather and spikes and all of that is so popular in metal culture <laughs> is because Rob Halford did yes. it mm-hmm. and he got it. From gay leather culture. Yeah, because he's a gay leather man. <laughs> and so he awesome. was like, you know what? I'm going to do it, and I'm going to look amazing doing it. <laughs> and then I'm going to get all these straight men to do it and not know what they're doing. <laughs> and I love it. Love Rob Halford. <laughs> so, anyhow, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, we just kind of veered off a little. I think it was a good. It was, mm-hmm. it was a good tangent. Hey. It was a fun tangent. It was, it and was educational. Edu- yeah. yeah. I'm trying, trying my best. Yeah. Trying my best. So, since we talked about roles, unless does anyone else have any other thoughts about roles before I? Um, Hawaiian are best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll give you that. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm hungry. <laughs> Man, I'm kind of We should go get dinner after this. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so, final thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's talk about honorifics. Mm-hmm. So, previously, we defined honorifics as things that um, either you would like to be called, maybe by whoever person walks in the room, or maybe strictly just by your partner. Um, or even just in a scene. I'm a big mm. fan of having honorifics that are scene specific. So um, thank you so much for changing that because I was going to totally mess it up if you didn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so some of those examples were like being called boy or sir or mistress. Slut. Or slut. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like during, I should say during certain scenes with certain people. That is one of my favorite honorifics to have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, I kind of wonder, like, if if you are comfortable with sharing, what are some honorifics that you all like to be called? Hmm. Well, I kind of like it when switching up, uh, she calls me daddy. Mm. That That kind of hits me in the, oh, my God, that's so sweet. You know, I, yeah. I, not not to be in a creepy sense, but it's affectionate. Yeah, mm-hmm, right. It's, it's totally affectionate, and it, it means a lot coming from her. You know. Yeah. Um. Well, she's called me her little slut before, her little cum slut. Mm-hmm. Um. What else did she call me? There are so many names she's called me, and now I'm just <laughs> spacing it. <laughs> I don't know. Go, go, to, go to somebody else. Let's. Well, I was I was gonna say because you brought up uh, daddy. It's so funny because usually when I use it, um, I'm using it totally as like a term of affection. Mm-hmm. Usually too, where it's just like it means a lot if I'm calling you daddy. Yeah, like it's a it's a big deal for me. On the flip side though, when someone else calls me daddy, it is just raw sexual energy. I'm like fuck yes, uh-huh. keep doing that. I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> well, I've I've called her. Her daddy several times uh, when okay so 
uh, I'm, I'm into pegging. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I don't give a shit who knows that, you know. Um, but it's only her that does it. Yeah. Only my mistress. And when she's in that role, when she's, you know, kneeled behind me, thrusting her fake phallus in my ass, uh, calling her daddy kind of gets her motor going too. So yeah. <laughs> it, it, you, can, you can call anybody any name so long as they consent and you consent. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, I didn't know I liked being called daddy so much until someone... <laughs> kind of empowering, isn't it? Oh, my God. <laughs> Let me tell you, the fucking... You, you called me, at like, what? Like, five minutes into me going down on you, and those five minutes turned into, like, 25 mm-hmm. minutes pretty quick. Hell yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I had to be like, hold on, no. <laughs> it's like I've been folded into a pretzel <laughs> for too long. She, she turned off the eco mode with just one word. <laughs> And it's funny because, like, I don't know. It's it's one of those. It's same thing when I think of like mommy. I don't. I don't think I've ever called anyone else that. I don't think I have much want for it. But I realized because I had someone else ask if they could call me that. Right, the first person who asked if they could call me, call me that. Okay. And it wasn't like an age play thing. Right, like that was. It was a. Uh, it was sexual, but it also was affection. Right, so okay. it was both of those things were a really big deal. And so he called me those things and I was like, okay, awesome. So that was just kind of like, it's still a going thing between us where he calls me mommy. And I'm like, all right, awesome. That's just like, it's almost like a pet name. Right. And then uh, someone else asked me, hey, would it be okay with you if when I'm in little space, I call you mommy or if I call you mama? And I thought about it and I said no, which that was like a weird brain thing for me because I was just like. My brain says that I don't want to be called that Mm -hmm. in that particular headspace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's weird because, like, they could call me, probably, they could call me Nana. They could call me, they could call me Daddy probably in that headspace. And I'd probably be like, yeah, okay, that works. But there was something about that word, maybe because the way that I associated it with this person Mm -hmm. and the relationship I have with this person, then I was just like, no, no, I don't want, I don't want anyone who's in little space to call me that, I don't think. Hmm. I don't really know what's going on with that. It's interesting. Yeah. But my brand just said, no. And I was like, oh, okay. I guess I'm going to know. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> well, and like I've thought about because they asked me, not the first one, asked mm-hmm. me if he could call me mommy. And I was like, I thought about it for a while. And I was just like, no. Just because... For one thing, I don't have that same kind of a relationship with him, but also just it felt it didn't do anything for me. And it didn't even like give me a, oh, that's nice kind Mm -hmm. of feeling. And I was just like, "Eh, no. (laughs) Is it just kind of like you're like, in this regard, that's not really an honorific I could relate to. Yeah. And I think, I mean, you know, talk about like trauma relation, like. I'm never going to be a mom. Mm-hmm. So it's like, eh, no. <laughs> I don't want the first person to call me that to be this. Yeah. Oh, that's totally valid. Yeah. Yeah. I just actually came to that realization just now. Wow. So. <laughs> well, now we have an answer because we've yeah. talked about this before and we couldn't quite like, yeah, was just like narrow it down eh. what it was about it that you were like, because mm, you were like, I'm not squicked out by it. Yeah. Like, that was the big thing you kept saying. You're like, like, it doesn't gross me out or anything. Yeah. But it also doesn't do anything for me. Like, so I'm neutral on it. So like, it shouldn't be a problem. But No. No. <laughs> so. I'm glad you guys brought up no's because for me, there I don't really have any honorifics that I desire to be called. Mm-hmm. But if there's something that somebody else wants to call me and there's desire in that want to, then go for it. Like, I'm all for mm-hmm. it. So, like, in, in the moment or whatever, like, if whatever you're wanting to say, I'm open to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I I feel like I'm I'm kind of like that too because I I played with boy and he asked me what he could call me and he asked if saying ma'am was okay because that's the first place his brain goes to especially when he's in subspace mm-hmm. is saying ma'am and he was like is that is that okay 
And I was like, I, yeah, I don't really have a lot of desire for that. But knowing that you desire that, absolutely, that's fine. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Yeah. And there's something to be said for for that that specific moment where they ask you, you know, what you want to be called or what they can call you. And you just kind of look them in the eye and say, what do you want to call me? Yeah. And then you they're know, just like, then, ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you made this so much hotter, so much quicker. Like, I'm going to give that option back to you because I know that you're hoping for an, a certain yep. answer. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been the per- that person. So, what can I call you? And I'm like, please say daddy. Please say daddy. <laughs> You know, I think that also that kind of brings up something in my brain too. With these honorifics, like mm-hmm. over time, your openness or closed offness to them will totally change. Oh yes, mm-hmm. like because even like when I you know, when I first got with uh, Gigantor, you know, he told me he was like the daddy thing. It's just not my thing. He's like, I don't know what kind of feelings I have around that. It's not my thing. He was very much still my caregiver. You know, right. that was like every role of, you know, a typical daddy, you know, as you would think like mm-hmm. in an age play relationship, he definitely filled. But, you know, I just referred to him as my caregiver. And then about like a year and a couple months in, he was just like, you know, we could try it. We'll, we'll try it and I'll know for sure. And he's been daddy ever since. <laughs> so, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so that's definitely, you know, like I said, initially he was just like, ah, but, you know, then he was like, I really like being called this now. Well, and like initially, you might bring into your own preconceived notion of what that entails, you yeah. know, like what it means to be called something when that might not be that person's intention at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yeah. Like, I, like somebody might say, Can I call you daddy? And I'm thinking, No, I'm not into like dark age play. And since mm-hmm. we're only sexual, like that would just be kind of wrong. But then after a while, you're like, Yeah, you can. Yeah, you're like, oh. Is that what you want to call me? Like, go ahead. You little <laughs> slut. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> so I you love that. Definitely adapt and change over time. Yeah. For a long time, I never thought I would call somebody daddy or anything like that. Like, I referred to my mister as mister because it was a weird line in my head. And he is a caregiver. But I was always, this is my mister. And... Now, like in my brain, obviously, I'm like, oh, well, daddy can, daddy can work. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, brought her around. <laughs> it's also weird. Played that the long game. <laughs> when you said that, my, in my brain, perceived Mister and Daddy in two completely different realms. Mister mm-hmm. has sort of a, I'm a, I'm a little witch, and this is my caregiver kind of vibe to it, like a, a kind of a, a creepy, spooky vibe, <laughs> I mean, aesthetic. I guess is what I'm going for. Have you That's met not her? wrong. <laughs> I, but, I'm not very spooky today. <laughs> no, but I mean, it, like that that term it, is what did it, and then the term "daddy" is is completely different. So it's mm-hmm. like it's weird that that in my brain, my mind does that. And it's just a, it's just a term, but it still can, no, like, yeah. sparks all it's kinds of things. It's the connotations that come with yeah. it, the preconceived notions like we talked about. Yep. Or even just like how I feel like, I don't know if anyone else has had this, her honorifics mean completely different. Like it could be the same honorific, but me calling person A daddy and me calling this person B daddy mm-hmm. mean completely different. Like the way that I call Gigantor daddy is completely different than... My C and C scene partner when I called him daddy, mm-hmm. right. <laughs> that was a whole nother level of oh, you know it's probably from some fucked up trauma. Well, Let's be honest, <laughs> but it's, it's different emotions too. Yeah, so. there was it. It almost feels like different words. I don't know mm-hmm. how else to try to explain it, but they no, just had yeah. completely different intentions and feelings behind them when I used them. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think that's what broke the line for me was it felt different Mm -hmm. like i was one of those kids i was one of those girls that growing up i called my dad daddy for as long as i could Mm -hmm. and so like calling somebody else daddy was like weird in my head because that was my actual physical dad yeah (laughs) (laughs) so like the fact that it's you Mm mm-hmm like, that changed it in my head. I was like, yeah, no, I'm okay with this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with this too, baby. <laughs> yeah. 
And apparently we are a hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, damn. <laughs> Anyone else have any fun honorifics that they've been that they've been called? Do they wanted to call people or I always like really? I like pet and not necessarily in a pet play sense, but in a a British Possession. man yeah. kind of <laughs> oh pet kind of like I watched a lot of Buffy. <laughs> Spike <laughs> called people pet and that did things to me. So, like, I like that. Like, mm-hmm. pet like that. And in a, in a possession kind of way, too. So, mm-hmm. and kitten. Uh, so. Back in the horny little teen days. <gasps> I got... Spike did things to my brain. <laughs> One of my favorites was Mime. Mime? Yep. Huh. She called me her mime, and I couldn't talk. I had to show her everything with my hands. Okay, I that's fucking that. badass. Yeah, I, I love dope. that. So it was more of a role play than it was, uh, you know, but still. It's still an honorific, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I love that. I was like, I like gener- just kind of by like everyone. Of course, I adore being called princess. Mm-hmm. Right? But I mean, it just, it means something different than like <laughs> when <laughs> when my uh, partner Rogue calls me princess. It feels completely different than when I'm um pegging my friend and he's calling me princess the whole time you know like <laughs> wow so it's that's that's one of those ones where i'm just like whether i'm topping or i'm bottoming mm-hmm. princess will go across the board it just me it feels different though when they use it i just realized that that's your name mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. interesting you just realized that <laughs> yeah. princess is yeah. my name yeah. <laughs> because it's always been anemic or your other name. And uh-huh. so it was never never the full anemic mm. princess. Uh-huh. So I never really thought of somebody... Like, if somebody asked me, Hey, is, is Princess going to be here tonight? Who the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I would never put two and two together like that. Like, I I don't know if, if... Do people call you Princess outside of your dynamics and stuff? A couple people do. Oh, wow. See, I would have no fucking clue who they were talking about. Well, usually the same people that call me Princess are... Also calling me by my given name. Okay. So, like, I'm pretty sure, like, Captain does that. He'll switch between anemic and princess and um, my given name. I'll be damned. Yeah. So, I think typically when he's in your company, he's probably saying anemic. Right. Because he knows that's what you what you know me as. But, um, yeah, a couple of people do. Though I used to have some big feelings. Let me tell you, when I joined the community, I was like, I picked up this cute screen name, Sydney McPrincess, and it's, like, a little creepy, but it's, like, super accurate, and everyone's going to call me princess, and everyone fucking called me anemic. And do you know how that sounds like an insult? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, oh, look at you, anemic. <laughs> I'm real glad people didn't do that to my username, because then they'd be calling me trash. trash. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Anemic and trash. <laughs> And greedy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's all negative all the time. I love seeing like this is this is a really sadistic part Thief. of me, but I just remember going Ooh. to to munches and people having to introduce themselves and people immediately regretting their screen name. Uh-huh. It's my favorite thing when they're like, uh, oh yeah, my fit name. But you can call me uh <laughs> I was that way with my email address until I got an adult email address. Oh, my like, gosh. When I started getting it at work, I was like, oh, I need to get a grown-up email address. Right? I'm tired of all the X's in my email address. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing my emo days. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So many people have... Uh... Uh, six nine six nine six nine kitten six nine six nine six nine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mine was a little more emo than that. What? Broken rage seventy nine. Oh, oh yeah. Mine oh. was uh, envious underscore greed. Ooh, spicy. My last non-adult email address was am I your anything? Ooh, Ooh. I that's like from that. an AFI song. <laughs> oh, I like it a little less now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I yeah. understand that's her biggest fandom you just <laughs> insulted. <laughs> like, I they have been my kidding. favorite band since the, my junior year of high school. <laughs> nice. Jeez. I yeah. think I think my last one was uh, My Friends Come First at Rocket Mail. 
Oh, Rocket <laughs> Mail. Yeah. I still I have a Rocket Mail account that I, I keep active. Wow. But, uh, that reminds me. Oh, wait. What was the... There was a domain that opened, and everybody got free emails if you signed up, and it was like at dicks.com or something like it was something yeah it was something like completely crazy uh oh. i wonder if i i can even remember but i wish i had known about that it, that was way back in the day yeah mm-hmm. but they um it was before gmail it was like everybody was still using okay. aol and and yahoo mail yep. <laughs> yeah i went from broken rage 79 to casanova's heretic Wow. Yeah. A bunch of edge lords at this table, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Those were the days of posting my poetry on uh, Zanga and Oh, oh and like... wow. My Zanga and my MySpace Damn. matched always. You're old enough? For... Oh yeah, you are, huh? Uh-huh. I, I, I still know. have it in my head that you're like 19 <laughs> years old. Yep. <laughs> and I know that's way fucking off. Yep. Yep. Sorry, yeah. I'm not. I'm, wow, that was totally asshole to say. I mean, you that's almost half my age, so. I know. I know. <laughs> I, know. I, I, I knew you when you were that age. Uh huh. <laughs> Can we rewind real quick for uh, the 25 year old at the table? What's Zanga? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I know in MySpace. The, I was around for MySpace for five minutes. It was like the other journal site besides LiveJournal. Uh-huh. Once LiveJournal became like super toxic. Yeah. It was, you could have a Zanga, and it was X-A-N-G-A. Yeah. But you could, like, put code in and design it and stuff. Yeah, you could kind of, yeah, you could change it up, and you could also post, like, whatever you wanted. Mm-hmm. Was it kind of like a blog? Yeah. 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 Okay. It could be. It could be whatever you wanted. Like, oh, okay. The, like, I think I was friends with somebody who she used it as a journal. Yeah. In fact, the reason I started was because... A friend who I met on Zanga, I was having a really, really hard time. And I was pretty much done with life and was mm-hmm. going to kill myself. And she's like, well, have you ever written it about what happened? And I said, I could never write it out. What if somebody finds it? She goes, write it and burn it. She goes, write everything you can remember and burn it. She goes, you don't have to give it to anybody. You don't have to show anybody. So I did, but I wrote it on the computer. So I would post it and then she would read it. And she goes, I'm very sorry that all of this happened to you, but this is fucking good. <laughs> and I was like, what? She's like, you should write. Like, write, mm-hmm. write. And I was like, I don't know what you mean. She likes stories. And I was like, no. I was like, I can't. <laughs> no, I can't do that. And she's like, well, make this a story. And so I took my actual past and then wrote fiction around it and then weaved it all together in one story that people could read. And even family members would read it and be like, oh, this was really cool. That's cool. You know, what, what if that would have happened? And I'm thinking, that part did. You know, like, You're you like, have this, no fucking idea what this happened. This character is based off of you. No, it would have the same fucking name. <laughs> what? It was the per- Yeah, like, I didn't change any. Well, I think I changed one person. But um, but that was it. Yeah. And so even to this day, that, that story exists. And it's in book format now. But... Hmm. In, and some of my fa- I've gave anybody in my family that wanted one got a copy for free. <laughs> Did they read it? Probably not. Otherwise, there would be a lot of conversations that would have taken place that never have. So mm, either a fuck lot of them. conversations or no conversations because oh my god, what the fuck? That's me. Why are you writing me? What the fuck? How did you remember mm-hmm. that? What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's conversations that probably need to take place that just never have out of fear. Mm. on all of our parts but yeah that's a whole other story <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah that's Zanga that's Zanga yep. mm-hmm. it's wow. like blog spot live journal all that that rabbit hole yeah well, and it was so cool and they didn't um, they didn't check profile pictures mm-hmm. no. so you could post whatever you wanted like there was this one friend of mine who posted like a nude of herself mm-hmm. and it was so hot now granted this is back in the day when it's like 17 by 24 pixels. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can't see shit. You think you can see, you know, because you know what you're supposed to be mm-hmm. seeing. But yeah, and like I, I told her years and years later, I was like, I saved that for so many years. And she's like, you can't even see anything. I was like, I know. She's like, do you want nudes? Like, I will send you nudes. 
I was like, no. I was like, it was back then. It was the whole, like, we've, our whole relationship's transpired. I don't even want to see your ass naked anymore. Not in a sexual way, anyway. <laughs> You're like, I just need the nostalgia. of yeah. this pixelated ass picture. Yeah, and there was something about that, too, that was so fucking hot. That, like, <laughs> even, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, the old videos where it was like really pixelated cam videos and you're like you can't see shit but it's so fucking hot because you know <laughs> what they're doing and mm. why they're doing it thieves out here into 8-bit porn yeah <laughs> <laughs> i used to build like pre-made layouts for websites and stuff and oh. i have them still on my computer and i pulled one up and like it was 800 by 600 wow. and i was like oh my god God, like that would fit in the corner of my current resolution desktop. Mm-hmm. And like not even take up a quarter of the screen. <laughs> and I was like, that's big. That's good. 1024 by 768. Oh my God, that's so big. Oh shit. Back in the day, like my, my very first PC had a whole 64K of memory. Mm-hmm. And the the it was billed as more memory than anyone will ever use. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now I've got programs on my phone that are yeah. like fifteen thousand times that size. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. My like, the first computer I bought myself with my own money had a terabyte hard drive on it. Holy and shit! It was like what the fuck? Like I spent over a thousand dollars on that. That had computer. to be in the late nineties. No, it was two thousand six. Oh, wow. Seven? A terabyte would have been a lot of money back then. Yeah. 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 And now it's like you can buy a computer with three terabytes. Yeah, but you're you're probably still getting like regular old heart spinning hard drives for yeah. that. Yeah. So you're not getting an SSD no. for that. But yeah, no, it's it's nuts. Anyway, now that we're talking about how old we are. Right. <laughs> Welcome to our podcast, kids. Damn kids, get off my lawn! <laughs> Take your clothes off. Oh. <laughs> you can get in the Rubber pool. Rubber swallows the most Tylenol PM wins. <laughs> oh, oh, that's creepy. Yeah. Creepy's good. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> we want to veer back to our show now. Yeah, oh, let's yeah, get back sure. to it. So I think that I think we pretty much talked role, uh, roles and honorifics kind of mm-hmm. to death at this point. I think yeah. that we have a yeah. pretty good conversation about that. So I was just wondering, uh, let's talk about our kink slash fetish of the week. Okay. Hey, um, have you ever heard of cuckolding? Once or twice. Once or twice? Mm-hmm. You ever try it? That's the meme, right? You're not really supposed to like it. You're just supposed to make fun of it. Uh, Isn't that how that goes with cuckold- cuckolding? God, I hope not. Oh, okay. This, I kind of like it. <laughs> I <laughs> have found that I have a thing for it. A huge, yeah? huge thing for it, in fact. But yeah, it started as one of those things that I would laugh at and be like, he's a cuckold. He's like a little bitch. <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> you want how all kinks start? You've seen, yeah. I guess, but still, <laughs> oh, like... Shit. It was it was so very much one of those things where I just started having fantasies of like being with somebody and like laying in a bed, having her lay like sideways where her head's like right next to mine and somebody's just fucking the shit out of her. Mm. Mm. Just giving her everything that I'm not just right then and there to where she can't even breathe. But still she's finding enough breath (laughs) to where like she's looking at me for permission Mm -hmm. for something. Mm-hmm. And she and and I I just know that she wants to kiss him, mm-hmm. and yeah, go ahead, you can kiss him, you know, like and then she takes that permission and goes with it and turns that into her whispering to him that she wants him to come inside of her, and she wants it now, like come now, like I'm not asking, come, and just changes like the whole dynamic and mm-hmm. and everything. I'm just like I am fucking all into this, yes. right? So yeah, I wasn't like. Hmm. I got, uh, <laughs> I got offer. It is it called something different when it's a woman that's being cucked. That I think I think that I it know. is. I think that it is, but I I can't remember the terminology for it. So I'm just going to use kind of the same terms. Mm-hmm. I got in a really 
uncomfortable way, which is part of the reason why I didn't really think about it too much. I got offered uh, for someone to do that for me with, like, she was very, like, oh, yeah, I'll fuck him in front of you and make it so, like, you can't, you can't touch or anything like that. And I know that she earnestly meant it as a compliment Mm -hmm. because she, she said that she was into me. Like, she Mm -hmm. was, she was like, I... She's like, you know, if I could even have a dynamic with you one day and be your top, like, I, I would want to do that. And she <laughs> kind of explicitly said that she is not into Gigantor. So, <laughs> and so he was like, ouch. Um, yeah. right. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> but, you know, but she had brought up, she was just like, oh, but like, I would, I would fuck him in front of you just to, you know, give you that experience. And I was really confused as to why she was offering that to me. And I found out that a lot of her previous relationships with, uh, back then I identified as a woman but you know with women were um they liked being cucked like oh. they liked the idea of her hooking up with another person regardless of their gender mm-hmm. and them you know watching that was that was a really big deal for them oh. and that's how a lot of her relationships had gone so it was like huh you know I thought about it and I think I just I think I have too much insecurity and trauma to be the mm. the cuck in that situation honestly to but the idea of doing it to someone else really gets me going. I, I was just going to say, I love the fact that you said in that situation. Yeah. At the end of that, mm-hmm. because I was like, way to go. Yeah, because <laughs> doing it the other way around, I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, I would totally do that. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I'm so hot. <laughs> I, I read in, in a little research that I did that um, there's not a lot of rules to define what is or isn't cuckolding because yeah. i wanted to know like is it still cuckolding if, if i tell her she can kiss him or am i supposed to be just mute and have no power in the situation mm-hmm. no say you know and they're like no you it all depends on what you guys all negotiate like yeah. you can have mm-hmm. as much or as less like it just all depends on what you guys all want to do like it's there's no set rules to it and and, i'm like oh okay and i think because so much of like like cuck porn that i've watched is all very like um I'm going to fuck your wife in front of you. And she's super mean to it, to her partner Mm -hmm. and stuff like that. You know, and he's sitting there, you know, whimpering because he's not good enough or can't do anything or whatever. So that was like, definitely that was what my idea of what cucking was. And then I started like, you see, I stopped looking as much porn, Mm -hmm. you know, and started going into like kinky spaces or you know different kinds of social media and i see for a lot of people it's some of it's based in like a lot of affection Mm -hmm. some of it's based in like humiliation um some of it is uh actually making kind of like the cuck a part of it at the end is like kind of part of the aftercare you know like like towards the end then you have the person who is being the cuckold go and you know interact with in this because it's the bull right Right. like there they go and like they interact with the bull and like they give him pleasure or something like that or they clean up their their partner um and so it can come from a really affectionate place too from what i've seen Mm -hmm. i really like the idea i like that idea actually as much as i like the idea of just being kind of sadistic about it yeah (laughs) i'm not a big fan of the the sadistic part like the degradation and stuff like that that's or degradation yeah degradation Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. yeah you gotta write that down (laughs) <laughs> degradation of it it's just not what I'm about man <laughs> the degradation I'm not about that degradation either <laughs> but yeah and, and I, was, I wanted to point out something that, that I realized too is this may have began for me a long time ago without me knowing it really because I used to really enjoy the porn where somebody was being fucked while they're on the phone with their significant other mm-hmm. and that person supposedly doesn't know but you know come on yeah, like, they're, just, <laughs> they're just moaning directly right, into yeah. the receiver yeah yeah no they don't know yeah. <gasps> oh this is a great sandwich <laughs> right <laughs> yeah yeah no they totally don't know <laughs> yep yeah. or there's actually somebody on the other line but uh-huh. still but yeah that, that was i was thinking like could that have been the start of it hmm. Because mm-hmm. I really enjoyed that kind of porn for mm-hmm. a long time. And still do. Like, when I stumble across it now, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, gonna watch that. Like, <laughs> kind of nostalgic, but also, I need a couple minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, it's something where I'm kind of, 
I'm really sad. I mean, I'm really sad that it's a meme at this point, mm-hmm. right? Because it's like, I I remember thinking it was so funny when I was like in high school. Mm-hmm. I don't really think I ever called anyone a cuck because that just wasn't something that was in my language as a high schooler I'm that I sure used. I'm sure I did. <laughs> but oh. not, as a, not as a high schooler, as, as an adult, because I didn't, I don't even think that term was around commonly mm-hmm. until like a couple oh, of years ago. <laughs> I used yeah. to be on a couple of uh, poly groups on Facebook, uh, burning hell Facebook, <laughs> um, but uh they tended to get... Hold on, I have to issue a ban for that comment real quick. Oh, no, just a warning. <laughs> <laughs> How misogynistic were these groups? A fucking horrible. Of course they I, were. Oh, my God. When when they found out that I wasn't in a one-penis policy relationship, oh. yeah, they instantly started calling me a cuck, you know, like it was a derogatory thing. And I'm like, mm-hmm. hell Yeah. Oh my god! Uh, watching watching her fuck this other guy. Oh god! I want to just oh yum. <laughs> and then knowing that she's also got you know a, a boyfriend and a husband and another boyfriend. Oh my god! That triggered them so fucking bad. It was great. <laughs> well, you also realize have to realize that they needed to they needed you out of that group before <laughs> their, their significant others saw those comments and yeah. uh-huh. decided, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I don't like that idea too. And I'm sure I ruined a few of their relationships yeah, right. because <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> Good for you. But no, their their insecurities, uh, tiny like, tiny little piece. Mm-hmm. Um, their insecurities have no no control over my actions, and fuck them, you know? Why would, why would I ever control what somebody else does? If my partner is into having another relationship, uh, another guy, fuck her, awesome, mm-hmm. you know? If, if she wants to tell me all the details, fucking phenomenal. I want to know the details, because, yeah. <laughs> right. uh, but, I mean, wow, now I think about it. I really like knowing the details. Too. Right? Mm-hmm. Isn't it hot? Yeah, it's really hot for me. Oh my god, am I into like this level of cucking? Yes. <laughs> well, is that what's yes, happening you right are. Now? Well, yeah, because because I'm thinking of like you know because I have partners where they're like oh, you know I really don't want to know but thing but I'm I'm just kind of like okay so you went on a date with this person and uh-huh. you got laid okay now tell me what did you do did you do this thing uh-huh. oh my god right like I wanted to know it gets like, you going huh <laughs> yeah mm-hmm. I think it's super hot but oh it's shit. like getting. An erotic story told to you exactly, exactly. but you know the people in it. Yeah, yes. and you know, uh-huh. yeah. and you know yeah. part of the bits that are in it too. Yeah, exactly. It's more yeah. real and it's more taboo because you're not supposed to have that shit. Yeah, <laughs> and it's fucking hot. <laughs> the episode in which we all come out as being cucks. <laughs> well, I mean, like now that we're talking about it, and like I would never consider myself to be have even been into it. But it's like if there's an affectionate level, like we we share a mister. Yeah. And we have threesomes quite often. <laughs> and like I am not upset if it's just you two. Like yeah. that's great. That's cool. Like involve me, cool. But... Can I can I ask something that might be too personal? Sure. Do you ever find yourself getting off watching the two of them? Um, I get excited. Okay. That's fine. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm not asking if you arrive. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just saying, no, yeah. you, does it get your heart pumping? Does it yeah. get you motivated? Does it, does it, do you well, find I mean, yourself lusting after it? Yeah, because it's just like. you say motivated? <laughs> That's motivated. a word. No, but yeah. it's an accurate, uh, it's an accurate okay. word. Is. I just had like drill sergeant status run through my head. Does like, <laughs> it get you motivated? <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. That may be another kink. Oh, <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. (laughs) But, like, I never would think of that because in my head, there's always that degradation part to Mm -hmm. cuckolding or, like, the other person not allowed to be involved. Yeah. Yeah, But that's just it. It is just like every other kink, whatever you make it. Yeah. Yeah. You have control over what your dynamic is and fuck what anybody else has to say about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like those asshole misogynistic pigs on Facebook? Fuck them. Yep. Which well, ones? don't fuck them. Don't. Fuck but them. my <laughs> point <laughs> is nobody else gets to dictate what you do in your relationship. What what you have set up your dynamic is entirely yours to mold. Yes. So take that clay and make it something beautiful. So instead of fuck them, fuck their partners in their driveway. 
Yes. There you go. And then <laughs> whisper things car. to them. Yeah. <laughs> when they go to work. I fucked your mom. <laughs> your dad was watching. <laughs> he liked it. <laughs> and your brother joined in. <laughs> Well, like, I was just listening to a podcast, like, it's a fictional story podcast, and somebody is like, oh, you are making a cuckold out of me. And, like, that was the first time in a long time I had heard it in the, like, traditional, like, derogatory. Like, yeah. Mean, yeah. Mean style. Yeah. It was like, and it was weird. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just like, well, oh, I guess that's what it is. <laughs> Do we want to come up with a word of the day? Well, I think I think we decided it was cuckold. Oh, okay. I don't know. I wasn't part of this decision, but I'm here for it. We're also not going to spell it because I want somebody to have to Google it so it's in their (laughs) search. I like it. I like it. Super down for that. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Well, in that case, how can they give us that word of the day? Hmm. Let's break the mold a little bit. Okay. Okay. Let's say, throw it at us on Facebook or Twitter. So send it through there in a in a message, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I I dig that. Awesome. Or well, you could just comment it. Yeah. Well, no, don't do that because it might get you. No. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Because no, no, no. Zuckerberg yeah. is. Yeah. You'll yeah. get zucked. We don't All want you. All hail our lizard lords. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with that, uh, hey, let's do thief. What are your final thoughts? Roses are red, violence are pink. This is a waste of damn good ink. That's what I used to write in everybody's yearbooks in junior high. <laughs> That was really cute. I would just write hags because I was basic. Have a good summer. <laughs> if I didn't know you, that's what I would write. Yeah, <laughs> that's typically what I would do, too. I'd yeah. write it really small because I was a little ashamed of it. Mm. You know, I'm just like, I don't want to take up too much room for the, like, the real friends. But hopefully they have real friends. Did you ever yeah. sign anybody's crack? Oh, the crack of their yearbook? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, but I always had so many dumb boys would do that. It was mine. always a dumb boy. Always a dumb boy, if that would. <laughs> Oh. My best friend in high school and I would save an entire page for each yes. other. Yes. We would draw on it and write a huge letter to each other. It's like, we're going to see each other in a couple of months. It's fine. But no, <laughs> we have to write this. That's <laughs> actually kind of awesome. The uh, so the cute. rhyme I stole out of one of my mom's yearbooks. Aww, that's, that's, kind of, that's adorable. Yeah. So greedy. Mm-hmm. Final thoughts? Hmm. Hmm. You are the most awesome. I think Captain Awesome would disagree, but okay. I, I don't <laughs> care what he thinks because he's not here. <laughs> Captain, we love you. Yes. <laughs> Kitten, final My, thoughts? I feel like I had a lot of breakthroughs on this episode, and that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome especially, to my world. Especially then. since I wasn't even supposed to be on tonight. I just was going to hang out. <laughs> we were like, hey, come on, get emotionally vulnerable yeah. with us. Oh, no. I'm Ooh. so glad she actually sat down at the, instead of hanging out, though, because she would have had all these on, like, on her own. We would have heard her like, light voice in the background. <laughs> mumble, 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 yeah. mumble. <laughs> now you just hear me mumbling into the microphone. <laughs> Those are good mumbles. Yee. Anemic. Do you have any final thoughts? Try calling your girlfriend daddy at some point. Hmm. Highly recommend. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do it to strangers? A girl, girlfriend. Someone you're in a relationship mm-hmm. with that both of you consented to and agreed upon. I, mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, oh. There, there's that consent. You had to fuck around and mess that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> you're welcome here to be your buzzkill. <laughs> Thank you for uh, joining us on another episode of the Gotham Press Podcast, listeners. And uh, with that. Surprise, motherfucker. Let me smash. Uh.